Michael Schur versus Osama Bin Laden. Who won out of the, the conflict and rivalry between the US and Al-Qaeda? Well, that is not yet known. But who certainly won between Michael Schur and Osama Bin Laden was Michael Schur. The CIA agent informed the CIA of how the uh, Bin Ladens and Osama Bin Laden in particular organised Al-Qaeda, how it was funded, how it was run and how uh, Al-Qaeda it was dedicated to the destruction of the United States and the emergence of a new caliphate but this mission was basically defensive and how Al-Qaeda relied on Osama Bin Laden for leadership. As the tre treasure trove of information that has been gathered after Osama bin Laden's death, which is the conclusive evidence of Michael Shura's victory over Osama bin Laden, and Michael Shura was the head of the Osama bin Laden task force to find, to find and kill Osama bin Laden, up to 2004 when he resigned in protest at the lack of resources being given to him in 2004. Now, Osama bin Laden has it's been proved now, was in direct control of Al-Qaeda right up until his death, when he attempted to resist capture and was shot in the head. His wife was shot in the leg, and she is now spilling her guts, telling the CIA how the how Al-Qaeda has split into two major, core Al-Qaeda in Pakistan and Afghanistan, has split into two major factions, and there has been bloodlet in between the two. Al Zakari, Zahiri, sorry, uh, may not be the leader of all of Al Qaeda. What is certain is that there has been now a, a break between the Bin Laden crime family themselves and Al Qaeda, the core of Al Qaeda in Pakistan and Afghanistan. This is an update which I would give my viewers. Um, there is also the problem in of U.S. foreign policy in Michael Shear's uh, words. This is why I believe he is a genius. He has correctly identified the tensions in Islamic society with the Islamic spring between the English speaking intellectuals and uh, internet bloggers who are behind the Arab spring but also the tension between them and the Isla Islamist parties such as the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt and other Muslims in the Muslim fundamentalists in the Islamic Maghreb and that's why we can't discount Al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb. They apparently have been feasting, in, in Michael Shear's words, on armaments left by the Gaddafi and Mubarak regimes and may do the same in Syria if, if it falls. So the West must be, in the European Union particularly, given Michael Shear's further comments, must be particularly careful about the Arab Spring must is a very delicate situation it must be handled directly um, as a delicate situation in my view I'm much more optimistic than Michael Shura although I am not an ex-CIA agent like Michael Shura um, Michael Shura has got a, a, an argument which is quite plausible that the richness and depth of historical feeling and religious feeling of faith towards Islam that has enriched people's lives in the Muslim world for 1400 years, in his view, is much more potent than the secular democracy and the secular secularists and democrats in the Arab world really do have to make a better argument, in his, in his view. In my view, the argument for democracy and freedom and liberty and equality and the natural rights uh, as an Oxford pr professor said, uh, much more, um, who was a Muslim, were much on Newsnight, was much more uh, plausible than Islamic fundamentalism, and that's why he believed that Al Qaeda had been sidelined into the mists of history. But what about U.S. foreign policy? Well, Michael Shura comes across as a, bel a, a believer in the super realist school of US, uh, the US tradition of exceptionalism and nationalism. Uh, from a US perspective, I can completely agree and support his view because I believe that although the European Union and the United States has to intervene in Saudi Arabia to 
defeat the Saudis and Bin Laden crime families, he gives a very plausible reason for us not to. He believes that Muslims, uh, what he said was Muslims should be killing Muslims and Israel, Muslims should be killing Israelis and we should not be trying to interfere in that. We should not be spending an American life or American dollar to protect Israel or to protect um, Sunnis and Shias from killing e each other. We are in the way and we need to withdraw and let them get on with it in, his, in Michael Shearer's view. So I can completely understand and empathise with that point of view, although I strongly disagree with some of the aspects of it because it leaves the question of whether Islamic fundamentalism will gain a victory in the Middle East. In either one form or the other, Shia or Sunni, there will be a victory from one side. And that leaves a big question about how we're going to deal with a Muslim world that is fundamentalism. That, so therefore I go more towards the Niall Ferguson view or low than Michael Shewer's at the moment. But I completely understand Michael Shewer's view and he is a genius. Um, he said uh, we need a non-interventionist foreign policy and he solves the problem of, of Arab power and Muslim fundamentalist power by taking away their, their source of wealth and that is the oil supply. He takes it away by saying that we must invest more in clean energy and having resources available to the United States within its, from its own continent or um, protective fortress, so to speak, Fortress America. Um, so there, there is his, most of his argument. He said um, far more eloquently than I, that the um, that you know people may vote for protecting Israel. It's a demo United States is a constitutional republic and a democracy. They may pr choose to intervene in the Gulf, but it's not worth an American life or an American dollar. The Americans have lost fifty thousand people in, uh, to casualties in the in Bin Laden's wars. Al Qaeda has lost fifty two thousand. It's not a great margin of victory for the United States. So from his point of view, that's 52,000 Al-Qaeda operatives have been killed. There's still possibly 100,000 working directly for the Bin Laden crime family. But here we give a start, he gives a stark warning, and this is what he's eloquent about what he said. The Bin Laden's campaign was defensive. The, they saw the their actions on 9-11 as being... One, in my view, from their egotism and their feudalism and their belief in their divine right to kill under from the Quran. That's my view. But in Michael Shearer's view, they believe they were doing a defensive action. What the Saudis are are imperialists. The Saudis believe, and the Wahhabists within the Saudi regime, in Michael Shearer's view, believe that they have a right to impose Islam on the entire globe. And this supports my view, in I believe, that we must intervene. The European Union and the United States and Great Britain must intervene, and must invade Saudi Arabia if there is no Arab Spring in Saudi Arabia. But we can only do it with Muslim backing. Because if there are Muslim democracies in the Middle East, then we can do it. We can intervene, we can put the Saudi and Bin Laden crime families on trial or annihilate them. But we cannot have a situation where we inflame the hearts and hatreds of one and a half billion people who are Muslim and most of them who are, are, who are illiterate unless they are, apart from their reading of the Quran, you know, what they're told through, it's, it's a verbal religion. The imams and uh, have control over the people because they can read and write and so the Arabs and the Arab Spring really has to seek down to three levels it has to get through those who can read and write who are opposed to the Arab Spring the, the authoritarian tyrannies uh, which the United States has been supporting for the last 50 years and the uh, Islamic parties who have been resisting those tyrannies but want to oppose their own Islamic tyranny and then to the illiterate masses. But I hope the Arab Spring succeeds.